Welcome to part two in our series of lessons on hydroponic fertilizers. In the previous video, we discussed the pros and cons of several fertilizer options. If you've not yet seen it, click here to catch up. In this video, we'll show how to use a two-part fertilizer to build a finished nutrient solution or a stock solution. The formulations and mixes used in this video are tailored towards leafy greens, but most of the concepts apply to mixing hydroponic fertilizers for flowering crops as well. So let's start with building a nutrient solution. To directly mix your fertilizer into your reservoir to create a finished nutrient solution, you want to first start with the recommended rates per gallon listed on the bag. In this case, it's 1.23 grams for our base premix fertilizer of 9737, and that's using the low rate. It gives a range, and that range is usually for starting at young greens, microgreens, going up to full head lettuce and larger crops. Then it has a recommended calcium nitrate level and magnesium sulfate. So we'll take those rates, multiply it by the size of our reservoir, in this case, 20 gallon reservoir, and we get 24.6, 71.6, and 33.4. Our next step is to weigh out each of these amendments with a scale, and it's nice to have some calibration units to make sure your scale is accurate. The next step is to fill the reservoir with water to about a third full. In this small 20 gallon reservoir, I'm starting with about six gallons. Then I dissolve each ingredient individually in a five gallon bucket of water. Because this reservoir is very small, I'm only putting about two gallons of water into each of these buckets. Then I'm stirring vigorously, and I personally like to use a little bit more of a high powered option. And it can help to use warm water to speed up this process. The dissolved solutions should be added to the reservoir in a specific order. Begin by adding the dissolved premix base formulation. Then fill the reservoir to about three quarters full. In this case, I'm filling it to about 15 gallons now. And then add the recommended magnesium sulfate. That's bringing us up to about 17 gallons. Then add the calcium nitrate slowly while circulating the system and now we're about 19. I add a little bit more water to top it off till it's full. We're, we're at 20 gallons now. Then I check the pH and adjust it to between 5.5 and 6.5, depending on the crop's optimum pH level. I then like to run the nutrient solution through the system for about 10 minutes and then recheck the pH. It can fluctuate a lot after running through the system, and especially if you have a crop already in the system, that can affect your pH. So after about 10 minutes, recheck the pH, readjust, and you're good to go. Next up, stock solutions. All oh, those L's. Stock solutions are generally mixed into two separate tanks, labeled stock A and stock B. As mentioned in the previous video, it is important to separate calcium from sulfates and phosphates when in a concentrated solution to avoid excessive precipitation. So we mix our stock solutions into two parts, stock A, stock B. To build our stocks, we're gonna use the same rates per gallon that we were using in the previous example, but we're gonna add a couple more columns. All right, so we're gonna add two columns, one for the concentration rate. In this example, we're gonna make it 100 times stronger than the recommended rate per gallon for finished nutrient solution. And as mentioned in the previous video, some of the common concentration rates are 50, 100, or 200 times the concentration rate used to create a nutrient solution. And then the final column is how many gallons of stock solution. So we're gonna make four gallons of stock solution. And that's four gallons of stock A, four gallons of stock B. And I'll quickly run through the math. As mentioned in the previous video, our base will go into stock B. 
Our calcium nitrate goes into stock A, and our magnesium sulfate will go into stock B. So this 492 grams of base formulation, along with the 668 grams of magnesium sulfate, will go into stock B, and the 1,432 grams of calcium nitrate will go into stock A. Let's start by building our stock solution A, which has our calcium nitrate. From our previous calculation, we figured out it's going to need 1,432 grams added to our grams added to our four gallons. Simply add the calcium nitrate to the four gallons of water and stir vigorously until fully dissolved. For stock B, again, start by weighing out the calculated amount of your premix base, your 9737 in this case, which from the previous table we calculated was 492 grams. And the magnesium sulfate, uh, I'm dropping letters, magnesium sulfate. And from the previous table we calculated that was 668 grams. Add both the premix base and the magnesium sulfate to a separate bucket of four gallons and stir until it's fully dissolved. And once they're fully dissolved, adjust the pH to 5.5. Stock solutions require constant agitation to prevent settling of various fertilizer components. For small stock tanks, smaller than 500 gallons, this can be achieved with an air pump. With our four gallons of stock A and four gallons of stock B, both at the 100 times rate of the normal rate used to create a nutrient solution, we could create 400 gallons of finished nutrient solution. I'm dropping letters. Solution. All right, so let's go through the process of how we'd make 100 gallons. We'd start with one gallon of stock A, one gallon stock A, one gallon stock B, and we would add those to 98 gallons of source water. And that would give us 100 gallons of finished nutrient solution. After we add the stock solutions, you want to adjust the pH of the reservoir. A big advantage of a two-part fertilizer is the ability to adjust rates based on source water. Here we have a city water test, and it's showing a significant amount of calcium and sulfate. By tweaking our amendments, our calcium nitrate and our magnesium sulfate, we can accommodate for our source water. In part three, we'll show how to calculate adjustments in fertilizer rates based on a source water test. If you have any questions, send us an email at infohortamericas at gmail.com. Give us a call. We'd be happy to help you with any of your fertilizer questions and check out some of the other educational content we have online. And stay tuned for part three in our series of lessons on hydroponic fertilizers. Thanks for watching.